Welcome back. Spring is in full bloom. Look at that at the Minnesota Arboretum. It's gorgeous. Yeah, the tulips always bring in the big crowd, right? And now is your chance to get an up close view. Now is the time. Garden guy Dale K showing us around this beautiful, colorful display. Good morning, Dale. Good morning. It is an absolutely little stunner. It's a little ripper of a morning here. The temperature is absolutely beautiful. The sky is blue and the only thing better on this beautiful Minnesota morning are all these wonderful fully in bloom tulips. It is an absolutely wondrous sight. It's so, so pretty and such a really, really special Minnesota morning. Joining us this morning is Amy Thuen, who is one of the lead gardeners here at the Arboretum. My first welcome. The obvious question, how many tulips do you have planted? This year we have an astounding 40,000 tulips. Uh, amazing. Oh 20,000 planted in the annual garden that surrounds us and 20,000 scattered throughout special points all around the Arboretum. And what was the design? There's so many colors this year. Yes. What, what was the inspiration and what's the theme for this year? The theme for this year is an admirable one. It's diversity. Um, diversity of, of colors. So you see there's all colors around me, yellows, purples, the standards, reds, whites, and blends of lots of colors, um, but also of shapes. You have, a few, you have a few of the different types of shapes that you can that can be planted in the garden, right? Yeah, so I, I grabbed a couple. This is a standard single variety. So everybody knows the standard single tulip. Um, I'll take that one. The, the double to complement it, just to give an example, is more, it looks more like a peony. Obviously has many more petals, um, but available in, in the similar colors. Uh, another one that's really special, most people haven't seen, is a fringed tulip. Oh, Obviously, look at that. it has some serrated edges and they look frilly and fancy. Um, another one is called a lily tulip and it has more pointed open petals. You might not even recognize it as a tulip, but it's called a lily tulip. And the final one is called a parrot tulip. And they are super fancy. Um, some have some serrated edges and when they're fully open and ripe, they just explode into a flower that doesn't look like a tulip anymore. That is really cool. Yeah. Now, you, we mentioned that this is one of the most popular displays at the Arboretum. I think, you know, folks are just itching for spring. And this is, of course, just one of those uh, kind of spring and tulips go hand in hand. What's the most, one of, what's one of the most common questions that you get uh, when you're out here weeding as you were before? <laughs> um, frequently, um, we get asked how we manage the tulips. Do we leave them in the ground or do they come out or do we replant them every year? And uh, here at the Arboretum, we treat them as annuals, just like you would a petunia or a marigold, um, except that they get planted in the fall. Um, and that's, that's kind of the cycle, that's kind of the life cycle. So planted in the fall. Yep, and then they require some chilling hours, which obviously we have frequent, uh, in, a multitude of here in Minnesota. So the chilling hours are not a problem. Planted in the fall, cold, and then they come up in the spring. And there's um, three different classes of tulips, early, mid, and late season. So if you're looking to design a flower bed for yourself and you want to have them all blooming at the same time, pick one or pick three kinds from each, from early all together or mid all together, three from the same time frame. Um, That's actually really good advice. Yeah. And as far as hardiness goes, I know there could be issues with uh, rabbits and I had that problem at my home yeah. uh, this year. They, the, they were hungry for spring too. Is there a type of tulip that might be hardier or more resistant to problems like that? Uh, tulips, unfortunately, are like a spring salad for all critters, deer, rabbits, birds alike. Um, the best way is to either fence them um, or we use a combination method approach. So we also spray them with something called uh, a product that's based with uh, putrescent eggs, rotten eggs. And unfortunately, it's, it's kind of stinky, stinky for, for a very brief time to us, but it lasts on the plants for a long time, even rainproof, and it makes them distasteful to any creature. Um, and the other option is to plant something that is not as tasty for the animals and then come here and see our tulips because we do all the hard work for you. Oh, there you go. A nice little plug for the Arboretum. Yeah. Uh, come here to see all the beautiful tulips. And as far as naturalizing goes, mm -hmm. uh, cold hardiness, you treat them like an animal. 
manual. We do, uh, yes. which is what Which is what I do at home as well. But uh, tell us about the one that you have in your hand that might be a little bit hardier for folks. This one is called Spring Green. It's a variety that's single, and it goes with any color of tulips you could imagine, and it is more likely to um, perennialize and to last year after year after year. Um, all the other tulips, the fancier varieties, the bright colors, um, they generally are best treated as an annual, and they... Uh, they won't come back every year to the same um, magnitude that they do the first year. Perfect. Well, there you have it. Some great tips, some great advice, but most importantly, if you want a little, if you have spring fever, if you want to see something a little bit more beautiful, definitely worth a trip here to the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. Right now, they are in prime bloom. With that, I'm going to send it back to you. Yeah. Spectacular, Dale. Oh, incredible. Hey, Dale, before we let you go, we wanted to share a photo of you or sent us here. Lindsay, she went shopping, flower shopping Aww. this weekend, and she ran into you. There you are in the middle. I, I understand it was probably a pretty I, busy weekend for Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah no, I call them day okay sightings. Um, <laughs> and there, there, were, there, was a, there was a lot of them. And the, the number one thing I get that people say to me is, you look so much better in person. So I don't know. <laughs> I just must look really... I don't know what I look like on the telly, we but it's better just going to be people. Bleh. I apologize. You look marvelous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's better to look better in person, I think. So we think you look good both ways, Dale. But uh, we're Dale glad you're helping people out. Yeah. <laughs> A wild Dale sighting. Thank you, Dale.